I was uh, hoping that I could uh, let you listen to something which I think is interesting because works of art and artists are always interesting. So if you can get the audio uh, going, that would be great. Climate Symphony, and every bar of the music in Climate Symphony is equivalent to one year of scientific da data. The Climate Symphony team are a mixed team of artists, scientists, uh, architects and composers, uh, directed by Catherine Round and Jamie Pereira, and they were using 20 years of recordings from 1994 to, four to 2014. Um, and it is uh, the audio version of the sound of a dying planet. So it's interesting that artists should be talking about uh, climate change in this way, in this with these uh, particular um, the manner of, of uh, working. Fashion Change, which is the book that Daniela kindly um, talked of, is, uh, takes its cue from climate change. It's climate change is trust transforming our weather, our agriculture, it's determining huge problems like global warming, um, and perhaps it's the real uh, reason behind migrancy, world migrancy. Um, it causes the death of animals, and even in Europe, it is causing um, heat waves, which again uh, overload electricity provision, rising temperatures and rising fatalities. So sustainability cannot be avoided and slowly all sectors of the business world are becoming more aware. But how does sustainability apply to the business of fashion? which is not just fashion, by the way, but it's the apparel and textile production. Prato is a very important place to be talking about sustainability in textiles, with its almost millennial history in textiles, and the corporation uh, which, which grew up with the corporation of wool makers in the 13th century, and with the famous merchant uh, Francesco Datini. I think um, probably this is a heritage which Prato should really remember, and maybe one of the connections with today's Museo del Tessuto could be with the history of uh, the innovative um, uh, policies and uh, actions of Datini. So the rag trade practically started in Prato, but today obviously is a very different world. World production of fibers is already around 100 million tons a year and is forecast to increase at an annual rate of 4% up to 2025. Maybe I can give you a figure. Um, this is a graph, this is the only graph I'm going to show you. It's a very sad one. Um, and we're facing a paradox, basically, because although we are consuming more and more clothes, increasing volumes are corresponding to falling profits. The fashion system is obviously in crisis. Clothes are cheaper and cheaper, composed of textiles that are cheaper, making more waste and less profits 
So what can be done? This information, by the way, was provided by our lecturer, Claudio Tonin, who, of the CNR, CNR from Biella. Uh, and uh, it is, who is part of our masterclass uh, called Out of Fashion. The fibers are marked by colors. As you can see, all but polyester are not forecast to increase despite the world population growth. By the way, the population growth is predicted, is foreseen to be um, uh, around 9 billion in uh, 250. So polyester is becoming something like 80% to 70 to 80% of the market today. Wool and cotton, um, in the light of the growing population, uh, are hardly expandable because um, they are competition for food and fodder. They are competition for land, agriculture. So the consumption of wool and cotton will not change since both fibers have reached saturation levels. Overall growth will in fact be supported by continuous replacement of natural fibers by cheaper man-made uh, alternatives non-biodegradable fibers, which are increasing exponentially. Um, so, and there are other uh, sectors also which are using textiles more and more, upholstery and furnishings and the industry. Okay, so in a recent report by the Mac MacArthur Foundation in Great Britain, which is reproduced by Stella McCartney in her um, campaign, uh, who interestingly uses this alarming information to sell her clothes with a campaign set, set in a landfill. This uh, foundation makes the following uh, recommendations. It recommends to phase out substances of concern and microfiber release to radically improve recycling, increase clothing utilization, for example, short-term clothing rental rather than buying, and to move to renewable materials. Well, I have a problem with this kind of research because it sounds to me very much a kind of research which is very marketing-oriented. The first and last recommendation to phase out substances of concern and microfiber release and to move to renewable materials, as we have seen, is not possible. Um, it will only be possible if there is research uh, and, and an authentic change. The scientists, it's true, are finding microfibers all over the place as a patina over rocks in the ocean, suffocating ocean wildlife, uh, etc. But um, this means that only uh, in, the, in a world which is going to be populated with 9 billion and with those figures of rising synthetic polyester, it means that our priority, our global priority, is research. So research is clearly an important thing that obviously no one can do on their own. Uh, it needs university research centers and industry working together and working together on um, the, the various kinds of research, but basically on making synthetic research, synthetic products more uh, feasible uh, for sustainability. The second recommendation of the uh, MacArthur Foundation was to improve recycling, upcycling, regenerating, in a, which is a strong message for Prato, <coughs> excuse me, which has a long-standing tradition in regenerating and recycling materials. Over 90% today, this is the, the figures, but it uh, figures by, um, not by excess, but uh, probably that it's more so, 90% uh, of fibers end up in landfills or in incinerators. Less than 10% is recycled. 
So why not make Prato a place of excellence of the future, turning waste into good? This is the future, regenerated materials which are biodegradable and certified. At the moment, the Italian uh, manufacturing and textile industry, not the brands, are fragmented, I would say, and composed of separate districts that are often a world unto themselves. Textile manufacturers in Como, which traditionally produced silk, talk very little to those in Biella. They don't know what those in Biella are doing, who have little to do with those in Prato. Brands are part of an association called Camera della Moda, which also has a different view from Sistema Moda Italia. Luca Giusti, um, just now, uh, was talking about working together. And I think instead of going ahead alone, these districts should start working together, not producing their own small certification. So the CEREC certification in Como and a different certification here. But working together, not, um, not wasting resources, um, to, and not just working between, with the industries, but with the universities on research, upcycling, partnering with all kinds of research centers, which can also be educational centers, which can be the local school, the local uh, polymada, which is an advanced, it's one of the most important schools in Europe, by the way. So, um, the future is what is this. Uh, I would, um, then there's the other recommendation that the MacArthur Foundation makes, uh, which are directed to consumers, to increase clothes usage, better maintenance, less washing, hiring instead of owning. But to, re to, to reach these goals, it's important that they, they need, you need a change of culture. You will not get there without a very strong effort to change our mindset. And moralism is of no help in fashion. And no one has the right, especially somebody like me, who's a reasonably well-off middle-aged lady, to tell anyone that how they should live. So I think we really do need to, uh, the, and, and the association, let's say, that I have founded, Connecting Cultures, I founded it in 2001, and our education platform and the, ma the masterclass that we are doing out of fashion exists to promote and enact a new line of thinking, which is a holistic view of sustainability. Um, in understanding also the motivations behind the reasons why people consume. You cannot just say people should stop, uh, I mean, people who don't like clothes, it's very easy. But for people who like uh, to appeal uh, to others, it's very difficult. And this is because fashion is a drive, is the engine behind consumption, and it's based on desire, basically unhinged desire, but a very human desire, which is a desire and a need for self-realization, self-esteem. And uh, the only problem is that now it's being exploited and it's becoming pathological. It's a mechanism which George Simmel, at the beginning of the 19th century, 20th century, defined as the need of people to belong to a society and to be recognized by a community, and at the same time, the desire to distinguish themselves for that, from that community. So it's a very, I mean, it's sociologically very understandable. But now clothes are no longer being made to be worn and to be cherished. They are being made to be thrown away. They are designed to be thrown away. Fast fashion does this. If you only have to look at a fast fashion place and see the queues of people, mainly women, uh, with their baskets full of stuff, to understand that half of those things will never be worn. 
And this is something which is, uh, it, it's, a, it's a business model which will need to be uh, um, in some ways understood and, uh, and faced. So, everybody in the world, all populations, are seeking for themselves the good life. Uh, we can't, we, we can't uh, not uh, understand and accept this. Everybody wants the good life. Even in China today, you have all those glossies, living magazines, design, architecture, everything is designed for people who want to live better, who want to have more luxuries. So I think we need to look more closely into the deeper meanings of the objects we design and make, their intimate nature and their intimate relationship to the things around us that we did not design. And I'm talking about nature, our geophysical environment, its resources, the world that supports our life, the air we breathe. Uh, context is not static, it moves with us. So it's something that we are interacting with, we are creating or destroying. Um, there's no other possibility. So, but why could the, um, why couldn't objects also instead be the concrete materialization of care? Of caring for people they're designed for, for context and for the future. And I would like to show you a few uh, images that will help you understand this. Um, this is our uh, course of out of fashion and uh, Anna Piaggi, who may be somebody from Italy, but maybe a lot of people also abroad will know. She was uh, one of the famous, um, most famous writers on, on fashion. And uh, here she's photographed by Alfa Castelli with this uh, car. And our partners are Gianfranco Ferre, the Fondazione Gianfranco Ferre. This is where we hold our courses at the CNA of Milan. Um, and this is our book. And I just wanted to go directly to uh, some of the most interesting artists uh, that for us are always an inspiration. Um, this is Li Mingwei who was present at the last Biennale, the Art Biennale, and <clears throat> his project was called The Mending Project. And Li Mingwei invites people to, visitors, to bring a damaged piece of clothing, uh, and which he will mend for them while he chats to them. And he will add small things like a little bow or something which is like a sign of care and decoration. Um, when he has finished, he will put it on a pile and it will remain linked to the thread that's on the wall that he used. So it becomes like a network. And um, the owners of the garments will come back later uh, to, to collect their uh, um, repaired work, their repaired piece of clothing. Uh, so it's like, uh, uh, it's a message or, or a symbol of taking care. So taking care not only means taking care of that person, but it means starting a conversation that involves uh, people and involves uh, we people working together. This is another design by Denise Bonaparte, who's a designer. She's not an artist, but she's a designer, a very original designer. And she made, she made this jumper for um, older people, thinking of older people. And uh, the, um, the model here is Benedetta Barzini, who is famous in Italy. She's a very beautiful woman, and she is still beautiful in her old age. And uh, she made this jumper thinking of, uh, well, it's generous at the hips, so it, it helps um, uh, you uh, accept, uh, let's say, uh, a, uh, a body which is aging. And it also has like a bubble at the wrist, 
which is a place you can hide a handkerchief because very often if you have a cold like me today, you need somewhere to hide a handkerchief. So um, it's a piece of thoughtful design which is not stereotyped, not just for the young and perfect, be perfectly beautiful. Um, this is another work by Lucy and Jorge Orta. Uh, Lucy Orta started out as a fashion designer and she's ended up as an artist. Um, and she's working here with um, uh, second-hand clothes and she made these very beautiful, interesting, personalized garments for the people uh, living of, at the city de, Cité de Refuge in Paris. And this regenerated collection uh, was presented uh, to the public uh, in the streets uh, during this fashion show. So, what is the good life? Could the good life not have a different kind of definition? Uh, could it be less about consumption and more about satisfactory relationships with people, your surroundings, your context, your community? It's not about maximizing profits, which is an autistic view of the world. So um, to, 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 to close now, to, to come to a conclusion, I think business <coughs> could be about creating good relations. Uh, and so why not start distinguishing some common objectives, exactly as TCBL is doing today. Michael Porter and uh, uh, Mark Kramer, as many of you will know from the Harvard Business School in their now famous article, Sharing, uh, Creating Shared Value, um, have already invented a new business model on shared values. Um, to summarize the concept, it could be this. An increase in value for shareholders is the direct consequence of an increase in value for all the stakeholders. What does that mean? That means that social responsibility of a company is a driver for change. It's not just something that a company should do because they are obliging you to do that by law now. It is the driver for change and will increase the probabilities of survival for businesses uh, in the mid-long term. This means investing in the future in different culture of the good life in a different definition of the good life. The Italian fashion industry has an important heritage as a highly specialized craft with a sartorial past, which from the late 70s changed the haute couture value, challenged the haute couture value of French couturiers, the so-called stylists of those days. I remember it because I was working marginally with uh, photographers and uh, fashion designers. I was doing what they called at the time trovarobe, and now they call it stylist, I think. Anyway, um, traditionally, the design, the Italian design, expresses its value through materials. And I go back to what was said earlier. Its quality bears witness to its excellence. This is something which is very hard to communicate because on the fashion, in the Paris fashion catwalks, it's all communication. It's communication very often, it's perverse communication, like the severed heads of Gucci, not to make any names, uh, of the last, um, of the last uh, fashion collections. And all brands come to Italy uh, for production. And here we have some just uh, views of Clerici, which is, uh, not Clerici, of the Fondazione Lisio, which um, is, is alive by miracle because it's, it has such a difficulty in keeping going, but it's um, a real a jewel for, and companies like Ratti, which are, um, have invested in sustainability, they're investing in courses in sustainability. They have produced um, Bilancio Sociale, um, so it's interesting and I think it's one of the reasons for their success. So maybe there's a, um, uh, there's a message in all of this. Uh, I think the message is that more research in quality, certified quality, certified short supply chains, go back to materials, 
uh, schools and universities. And the, above all, keeping clothes for longer means liking them. And if we make clothes to last, we have to like them. Therefore, they have to be of quality and we have to be able to understand that quality. How many people today can tell the difference by touching it between alpaca and cashmere? I think very few of us. But this is important, and it's, an important, it's, it's important, especially for fashion designers. And fashion design schools today are only talking about images. But images, the image is a shadow world. It's not the world of reality. And I think the world of reality needs to come back to us. So above all, we need education. That's my point of view, obviously. Um, distinguishing the, the ability to distinguish the importance of issues and how to face them because it's not it's not enough to say we need to do this how are we going to do this deciding our priorities requires understanding reflection correct information and not greenwashing i think it means uh, discussions with experts in different fields uh, with different viewpoints, just as Daniela Toccafondi and Jesse Marsh and the organizers of this, uh, these three days have done. So I think this, I believe, I really believe that this is the way forward. Thank you. Um.